Welcome to another edition of Wealthy and Wise Wednesdays, where we share a few words of financial wisdom to help put you back in the driver's seat of your financial future. Today is Wednesday, January 13th, and today I am here with disability expert Mike Rass. Mike Rass is a financial professional with Mass Mutual, and today we're here to talk to you about protecting your greatest asset. You know, Mike, when we ask people, what do they consider to be their greatest asset? We often hear my 401k or the equity in my house or my pension plan, but you have a different angle of what people's greatest asset is. So I'm going to turn it over to you, drop some knowledge on us with your expertise. Sure. So on that note, uh, one of the questions that I'll ask my clients is kind of like what Ron said, what do you think your greatest asset is? And you'll get all kinds of different answers for that. Well, when you think about it, if you're 30 or 35 or 40 or really anything 50 or younger and you're not retiring for another 10, 20, 30 odd years, let's say you make 50,000 a year or 100,000 a year. Well, if you have 10 plus years to work, isn't your ability to earn income your greatest asset? So if you're making $100,000 a year and you're not retiring for another 20 years, you're going to make well over a million dollars before you retire. So why would we not make sure that our ability to earn income is protected and we have some kind of foundation if we're not able to go to work and we're not able to be that ATM machine for our family that we still have that ability to earn income and provide. So we often think about what happens if, God forbid, we pass away and we're not there to provide for our family. Well, that's what life insurance is for, right? So a lot of people will have a plan there, but not a lot of people will have a plan for, okay, what if I don't pass away early and I'm sick or hurt and I can't work for six months or a year, or maybe even I just can't work at all until I'm in my 60s and now I'm on social security. How am I going to bridge that gap? Well, a lot of people will have coverage through their employer for some kind of long-term disability. Uh, but when we really get into the pitfalls there, there can be some issues. So if we just draw like a very simple illustration here, this poorly drawn cup is 100% of your income, okay? But are we really taking 100% of our pay home? Well, no, because we have taxes, right? State income tax, federal income tax. If you have a sales tax, property taxes. So you're probably taking home maybe 70% of your income, right? Because the rest of this goes to the government to various levels. Well, what happens with most employer coverages for whether you're sick or hurt and not able to work, uh, they're really replacing this level of your income. So you're getting around 60% is uh, the maximum that the federal government will let you have with your employer. However, the issue here with your employer-based plan is that those benefits are taxable. So when you're getting your income from your employer's disability coverage, you have to pay taxes on those benefits. So if you're in a, if about 30% of your income is going to taxes, and you're taking home 70% and your employer is covering 60% of a taxable benefit, uh, well, what's six times seven? 42, right? So you're really taking about 40% of your income. If you get sick or hurt and you're solely relying on your employer's disability coverage, Instead of having this little pitfall right here, you're thinking, oh, I'm getting 60% of my income. You have this massive gap here. 
And the best question you can ask to make sure that you really illustrate the enormous issue here is now, Joe, most of my clients have a hard enough time living on 60% of their income. I don't know anybody who can live on 40% of their income. Did I just describe your situation? So if that's the case, if almost nobody can live on 60% of their income and literally nobody can live on 40% of their income, why don't we do something to help bridge this gap and have a supplemental disability coverage outside of your employer to make sure that you're getting your true 60% of your income replaced. And that kind of plan isn't going to have a whole heck of a lot of a cost to it because you're really supplementing maybe 20% of someone's income with a disability, a supplemental disability plan outside of employer. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. You know, I, I find it really interesting just to add to, to a couple things that, <clears throat> that Mike was saying. Since the financial crisis in 2008, the number one leading cause of mortgage foreclosure, long-term disability, where people are either uninsured or underinsured for it. And not only do people have a really hard time living on 40% of their income, but guess what? There's now an additional expense, isn't there? Exactly. Because whatever's causing the disability now there are all sorts of medical bills that are, are coming in as well. Right. So when we're talking to clients, it really comes down to this. And this is the question that, you know, I want you guys to consider as well. Look, if something were to happen to you, I can either send you a get well card or I can send you a check. Which one would you prefer? I like it. 